Hi there, this is Alan Adams. I'm going to be recording uh, several lectures for you. I'm starting today with chapter 4. Uh, please refer to your text and you'll see that I'm starting around page 115, 116. And uh, this is going to be how we'll conduct our lectures for, it looks like, the remainder of the semester. That could change. Uh, we'll wait to hear from, uh, from Dr. Rooney about that. But for now, uh, I'm just going to plan on continuing this until further notice. Uh, these lectures will last uh, probably, I have some file size constraints, so they'll probably last 20 to 25 minutes each. And the beautiful part about this is that you can uh, pause, walk away, come back, rewind, uh, watch it to clarify any points on which you have questions as many times as you, times, rather, as you like. And everything will be posted to my, uh, my own YouTube, YouTube channel, rather, and I'll provide all the links for you, okay? So we'll be... Uh, doing lectures in this manner, and I'll be posting our assignments, our PowerPoints, and our Excel spreadsheets, just as I have been doing so far in our semester together. Okay? We will have one more interim quiz that's going to take place in a couple of weeks, and then we'll have our final, and of course we have the project. Uh, I posted my first video the other day, it's already uh, linked up here, uh, through uh, my courses, to tell you about how to uh, do the project. The project is quick and easy, seven simple questions, and that will be due during the last week that we would have had classes together. In other words, the week before finals, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up our PowerPoint here, and in Chapter 4 we start talking about uh, actual transactions. Now, uh, I've referred frequently to it's keeping a set of books, how the accountant and the bookkeeper have to keep a balanced set of books, okay? We've taken those books and we've done financial statements from them, at least we've explored them. We haven't actually done them yet, but we'll do that together. But first we have to understand how a set of books is compiled, uh, organized, and uh, controlled. Okay, so everything is done in terms of transactions. Now let me flash back for a moment here to a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet where I made a couple of notes. I don't want to remind you all that the magic equ equation that we all follow is right there. Assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. Assets are the things we have, resources that we control. Uh, liabilities are claims against those assets. They are uh, amounts that are due to be paid to outsiders. Uh, our creditors, in other words, they're the creditor, we are the debtor. We owe them and they have the right to collect money from us. So those are all lumped under liabilities. If something is not a liability, if an asset does not have a liability against it, then it's yours, okay, as I described several weeks ago. And that is equity. That is the true measure of our wealth, whether it's you as an individual or whether it's uh, a business enterprise, small, medium, or large, okay? Now, you'll notice down here that we have learned in an income statement, it measures activity for a specific short period of time, revenues and expenses, Okay, revenues are inflows from the normal lines of our business. Expenses are things that we have to pay. Uh, and obviously we want revenues higher than expenses because the difference between those two is income. We also, if something is outside of our normal scope of business, we, it, it operates the same way as revenues and expenses, but we call them gains and losses. Just to be clear that a person probably shouldn't expect a business to generate them again because they are outside of our normal lives of business, they are extraordinary, okay? But they do have an impact on our business. So we take revenues, expenses, gains, and losses, and after a certain amount of time, let's call it a year, we measure things monthly, but we have to stop uh, at least once a year uh, and issue reports and issue our tax forms and such. But once we have measured that period, those four accounts, revenues, expenses, gains, and losses, all get lumped together and transferred up to equity, okay? So that means that equation, that magical equal sign there, that always has to be in balance according to the rules of math and the rules of algebra. So uh, that means that the system of accounting we use that I believe goes back to the 17th century in Italy uh, is twofold. When we record transactions, a business event, then we're going to have to do it in two or more places, and it will always have to balance. If you change one side of that equal sign, you have to change the other side by an equal amount, or the equal sign won't work anymore. Or you could 
do everything on the same side of the equal sign. Like a liability could go up, a different liability could go down, and the equation will still balance. Okay, so everything we do will have that twofold nature. And secondly, what is a transaction? Okay, this is my own definition. I haven't quite seen where Dr. Hoyle uh, has captured this, but this is my definition. It's two things. It's an event that affects a company's status or its activities directly, number one. Number two, it has to be measurable in terms of dollars, in terms of money in the United States. Obviously, that would be in U.S. dollars. So that means there are some things that are not transactions. Example, if I'm the big boss, if I'm the president, and I decide that we're going to buy a building next year, I've made a decision. Is that a transaction? No, it is not. I've simply made my mind up about something. Okay. Later on, if I do buy a building or buy an asset, that would be a transaction, and I would know how to record it in terms of money as well. Okay. So uh, I'm going to give you plenty of examples in Chapter 4 about uh, what does represent a transaction. The job of the bookkeeper and ultimately of the accountant is to make sure that they take every transaction that's affected a company's status or its activities and recorded it permanently in their books. No pencils allowed. This has to be permanent. There has to be a permanent, unerasable, indelible record of any transaction. Why is that? Well, we have a fancy name for it. We call it an audit trail. We have to be able to go back years from now and look back and see what happened on our books. So we have to make sure that trail stays intact. There has to be paper backing it up. And there has to be an entry for every transaction that exists and that affected our company's finances. Let's get to some examples, okay? So let me get back to my PowerPoint here. Okay, so I've just defined a transaction for you. These are our learning objectives, okay? And uh, this is how it works. Our accounting process is going to uh, basically include analyzing every single transaction that happens that's measurable in money and that affects us. The author says transactions, um, transactions include, that's, that's poor writing up there, transactions include any event that has an immediate financial impact, okay? Now, here's the big thing to remember, ladies and gentlemen. Each transaction is going to cause a measurable effect on a company's, what are the big five, assets, liabilities, and through the equity account, it will include our activities like revenues, expenses, gains, and losses, and the other things that are in equity besides our income. The stock itself, the owner's equity that belongs to him or her, and any dividends that are paid. Now remember, dividends are not income items, they're not revenues, they're not expenses. A dividend is a distribution of past profits. Please remember that. Don't ever, don't ever look at the um, income statement and expect to see dividends there. Okay? That measures the company's business activities. Dividends are a later decision to take a little piece of the owner's wealth and send them a check for it. Okay? So, again, in summary, every transaction will have some effect in two or more places on a company's assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, gains, losses, stock, or dividends. Okay? All right. Now, here are some transactions. Remember, I said a moment ago, a decision uh, is not a transaction. Um, if a company decides to go into a new line of business, that's not a transaction. Okay? They will become transactions later. Here are some things that are transactions. You go out and buy inventory. Why do you buy inventory? Well, because you're planning to sell it. Every transaction, ladies and gentlemen, break down the words. Break down the words. All the clues are there. No mysteries allowed. All right? You are going to be able to read a line like that, describing a transaction, and say to yourself, self, I know exactly what accounts should be affected. Okay? We buy inventory on credit. Okay? Well, that means we've got inventory we didn't have before. And it says we're buying it on credit. That means we're also going to owe somebody some money. They're not going to forget us. We're going to have to go pay them later. There's got to be a dollar amount as well. Okay? $2,000. Everything you need to record that transaction on a set of books is right there for you. Just break it down into its simple English components. Okay? 
We paid regular salary to an employee. Good. We borrowed 9000 in cash. That's a transaction. Cash comes in. And a liability is created because that bank, because those sons of guns are going to want to be paid back. Okay? You buy inventory because you intend to sell it. So we're also going to see what happens when you make a sale. Two things are going to happen when you make a sale of inventory. Number one, you've got to record the fact that you sold something. That's revenue. Secondly, you've got to get it off your books because it's not yours anymore. Once you sell it, it belongs to somebody else. And two different parties can't both have title to the same inventory. So whenever you sell inventory, you're going to have to make sure you get it off your books and record the revenue. That's going to take two steps. We'll get to that. Okay, so we'll talk about some of these transactions as we go. We're going to take them in this order. We're going to talk about what is happening to the company's books first. Then we're going to go back and see the actual mechanics that a bookkeeper will use to record these transactions. We'll get to that after. So what we're going to do first is break down the words of each one of those transactions to see what's affected. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses, and so on. Okay, there's our magical equation, right? So, if a company buys inventory on credit for $2,000, everything you need to know is right there. Think to yourself, what accounts have been affected? Well, inventory is an asset, and my assets have just increased by $2,000. Okay, what else happens? All right, look at that equal sign now. Something happened on the left side of the equal sign. Something's going to happen somewhere else. We'll have to decide where, okay? But say to yourself, what else happened? It's right there, friends. It says, we bought the inventory on credit. That means we're going to have to pay for it later, and we have a name for that. We call that an account payable. So a liability has been created as well. The left side of the equal sign goes up. The right side goes up by an equal amount. The sanctity, the holiness of that equal sign has been preserved. Okay? Now I haven't sold it yet. We just bought it. We intend to sell it. We'll get to the sale later on. Okay. Next, a company is going to pay a salary of 300 bucks to one of its employees. We already know that that would be an expense. Okay? An expense is incurred to support revenue. I pay my employees because they are working for me to create or to sell a product directly or indirectly, even if they're in sweeping the plant or squirting grease into a machine, they're still doing something to contribute to the revenue generation process. Okay, so what happens? A company pays a salary of $300, okay? So cash, you know what? They should have put that cash number, that 300 on the left, that should be a minus or in parens. Again, a lot of times these slides are written by grad students, not by the authors themselves. I am not very good with PowerPoint, but I'll see if I can fix that at some point. But it says right up above what's happening, cash goes down by 300. No, sure, we're paying our employees. We're writing a check to them, so cash comes down. Just like when you write a check from your checking account, your cash balance goes down. What else has happened? Well, we know we have to say why. Why did we pay 300? It's because we're compensating an employee, and that means expenses have gone up. Okay? Now be careful of that. When expenses go up, that's bad. That takes away from equity. So for now, whenever we have revenues or expenses, we're going to lump them into equity. We're going to come up with a more elegant way of, of doing this uh, in an actual set of books later. But think to yourself, what happened to my equity? Well, expenses are bad for me. They bring down my equity. So think of expenses as being a negative to your wealth. The less expense you have, the wealthier you are. Okay, now, again, um, we use, in business, we have to use, GAAP requires us to use, the accrual basis. Okay, now, you and I, uh, if you and I receive a, a paycheck from an employer, all right, that's when we measure it. That's when we include it in our taxes. We're called cash basis taxpayers. Not so with business. Business makes us sometimes separate the revenue expense effect from the cash movement effect. In other words, sometimes we're going to record revenues and expenses when we earn them or incur them, not necessarily when we receive payment 
or make a payment. We're going to separate cash. That, friends, is called the accrual system. Okay? Now, that top line says some companies ignore accrued expenses until they're paid. Gap says no. Okay? I wish the authors were a little more careful about that. But I'm clarifying it for you. Okay? Most companies have to use the accrual system. All right? And recording an expense when it has been incurred is called accruing. That's what the word accrued expenses means. Okay? All right. Now, again, um, most companies, in fact, just about every company, if they have to comply with GAAP, will recognize the expense and the liability as the amount grows. Okay? Let's get back to the salary. You work for me, and you've just done a week's worth of work, but I haven't paid you yet. Okay? If you have a job, you know that your employer probably pays you the Wednesday or Thursday following the week that you did the work. Yeah, but that's still a claim that you have against them. They can't not pay you. And if they try to get away without paying you, especially here in Massachusetts and other places like California, you have a lot of rights and you can do them a world of hurt. Okay, so they, uh, you have earned that money. They will pay you next week, but pay you they must. Okay, now remember, when you've done the work, okay, that company has a liability. To whom? To you. Okay, so that liability would go on their books as soon as you've completed the week's worth of work. Now, when they write you a paycheck next week, they're not going to owe you the money anymore, are they? No, you can only, it'd be nice if you could, but you can only collect that money once. So we put the expense when and where it belongs, when you earned it. Now, they haven't paid you yet, so what do they have? Your boss has a liability. Okay, so there's that twofold effect again. Next week when they pay you, there's no more liability. Once you pay off a debt, I don't care whether it's to an employee, I don't care whether it's to an outside creditor for an account payable, a bank, no matter who. Once you pay that liability, you don't owe it anymore. You can't collect a debt more than more than once, rather. You can't collect it twice. Okay? So we record the expense now when it's incurred and give birth to a liability. Later on, when we pay off that liability, it goes away. Okay. So in this case, well, this is kind of the opposite. Here, we're giving birth to a liability. A company is going to borrow $9,000 from a bank on a long-term note. In other words, a promissory note, a loan that they will pay more than a year from now. That's where the, the phrase long-term comes from, friends. So what has happened transaction-wise to this company? Well, when you borrow money, what happens? Number one, cash goes up. You've got cash you didn't have before. Number two, you've given birth to a liability because that bank is going to want to get their money back at some point. So, as you see here, cash goes up by 9000 and liabilities go up. They increase by 9000 No effect on equity. When you borrow money, that doesn't affect equity. That's not earning revenues or incurring expenses. Okay, It's creating a liability. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, this is going to require two, we call these entries, by the way, these transactions. These two-fold transactions are called entries. Um, now here, they've wrapped two transactions into one. As I said a minute ago, when you sell some inventory, um, first you have to put the revenue on your books. Secondly, you've got to get the inventory off your books. Now, the interesting thing about that inventory is it's on the books for how much you paid for it. We call that the cost principle, okay? Um, but you're not going to sell it for the same price, are you? No, you wouldn't make any money. You're going to sell it at a price higher than you paid for it. In this case, you bought some inventory for $2,000, remember that? And you're going to sell it for $5,000. Ah, nice deal, hey? All right, that's a great little profit margin. So, first of all, we're going to have to show that we've got new revenues on credit. Now, we sold it on credit. Remember what we call that, right? That's an account receivable. It's almost as good as cash. We'll collect it later, and then we will have cash. But for now, we do have the right to collect that money. That's a good legal claim. Okay? Uh, it's kind of like a, kind of like a short-term trade loan, uh, except this time we're the lender, and we expect to get paid, let's call it within 30 days. So I'm selling that item to you for $5,000 on credit, okay? Now the accrual system says 
I have to record that revenue now. I've earned it. I've done the work. Uh, I don't have your cash yet. No, but I will. Okay. So first I have to record that revenue at its selling price. That's $5,000. Secondly, I have to make another transaction because that inventory is not mine anymore. It has become a cost. In this case, we call it cost of goods sold. It is an expense, and that is how much I did pay. Okay? If you will bear with me, I have a phone call. Hold on, please. Okay, hi, I'm back. Um, let me... Actually, I'm going to terminate this discussion. I'm going to start a fresh recording uh, for the next section because I'm almost at my deadline. So uh, stay tuned. I'll be uh, making more postings as soon as I can. And have a good day.